Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and welcome to part 17 of our series on making a custom character controller in Unity. Okay, let's finish up this walking controller. So at this point, we're able to interact with objects or attack objects in our game, but we can't do both in the same gameplay session. And the reason for that is that right now, our how we choose whether we're attacking or interacting depends heavily on what physics layer our hitbox is on. And we right now we're just doing that manually. When we go to our hitbox here, we see the layer is either on player attack or player hitbox. And so what would be better is if we could do that through code. And we know that we can do that because we've done that with our interactable objects and our attackable objects. However, we also need to know what integer is associated with both of these levels. So we can click on add layer here, and that'll bring us to our tags and layers screen in the inspector. And so now we can actually take a look and see what these layers are. The two we're interested in are player hitbox, which is layer 8. Whoops, that kind of copied something there weirdly. Player hitbox and player attack. Um, I'm going to actually change player hitbox's name because it's not exactly descriptive for us there. They're both hitboxes technically. I'm going to change this one to player interact so that it kind of matches up with these. So we have player interact and player attack. We want to remember again, maybe make a note of it, player interact is layer 8, and player attack is layer 10. With that, we can actually jump into some of our scripts and start doing some coding. So I'm going to go and open up walking controller in Mono Develop. Zoom in a little bit here. As well, I'm going to also open up player hitbox. Now, starting in player hitbox, I'm actually going to add an enum up here that's going to help us track which um, kind of which state we're in. Are we in an attacking state or an interacting state for our hitbox? So I'm going to say, before we actually start the class up here, I'm going to say public enum, and we're going to call this player. Or actually, no, we're going to call it action type. That's a little better, a little bit more succinct. And in here, we're going to put the two states that we have, either interact or attack. Now, inside of our actual uh, player hitbox script, we're going to want a few different things. First, we're going to create another variable down here. And I'm going to just say track action type. And it's going to be an action type, and we'll just call it action. And so that's all this job, this um, particular variable's job is, is to track are we currently interacting or are we attacking. And that's going to come in handy in a little bit. Um, awake can stay the same as can update. The next thing we're going to change is our start collision check. In here right now, all we're doing when we choose to start, you know, to activate our hitbox, is we're just activating the collider and seeing if anything in the current layer is hitting. This is where we're actually, before we even enable this, is where we're going to actually set the layer to what it should be. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set that action type. And in order to do that, we're going to want to set it to whatever action type we're feeding into it. But right now we're not feeding anything in. So we need to make sure that when we call start collision check, in addition to the duration and if there's any secondary value, we're going to pass in an action type. And we'll just call that ACT. So now action, our tracking uh, variable, is going to equal that same um, parameter. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say if we are in fact interacting, then we need to set it to the set our physics layer to the interact layer. And if we're attacking, set it to the attack layer. We can do this a couple of different ways. We could do this with a couple of if else statements, or we can do it with what's called a conditional operator, which if we, since we only have the two action types, will work just fine for us and we'll keep everything on one line. So how we do this, what we're actually going to be ultimately doing here is we're going to be saying, checking our collider. Actually, we don't even need to check the collider because it's on the game object. We can say game object dot layer equals. And so this is going, what this is doing right here right now is it's grabbing our hitbox because this is, this is what has that script on it. It's looking up at the game object part of the object and saying, what is this layer or what should I be setting this layer to? So that's either going to be 8 or 10. So we know we want it to be either 8 
or 10. But how do we determine whether which one it should be? Well, that's whether or not it's whether or not this parameter is interact or attack. So how we can do that is we can say, I'm actually going to clean this up for one second, and we'll say ACT equals interact. So we're kind of asking the question, does ACT equal the interact action type? If so, then the layer should be on layer 8. Otherwise, we use a colon for otherwise, it should be layer 10. I'll put some spaces in here to make this a little bit cleaner. So what this is ultimately just saying is game object layer is either going to equal 8 or 10 based on the result of this question. You could also put action here if you wanted to, but I don't think it makes that huge of a performance difference at this point. So with that in there, the last thing we need to do now is down in our on trigger enter. Because right now, now our hitbox is on the right layer to um, detect the right kinds of objects. Now down here, it's either going to interact with an interactable object or an attackable object, depending on um, which layer it's on. Unfortunately, just getting that type of collision doesn't exactly work for us. So what we can do though is say, we can use that tracking variable to say, oh, we're currently interacting, so we know if we collide with something, we should use the interact action versus the attack action. So we can do that pretty simply. We're gonna say if action equals action type interact, then we can actually just cut and paste this right into here. Else, again, because we know we only have two types of actions, um, we can just kind of use an else statement here. We don't have to have, we don't have to specify the other condition. Else, we know we're attacking, so we'll attack. Now, this all works great for our hitbox, but there's one problem we have, which is that, remember we added this parameter to tell our um, hitbox what kind of action type we wanna do. But we don't have that in our delegate, so we need to make sure we're updating that as well. Here in our walking controller, we have this public delegate hitbox event handler, and we've got our float and duration. We need to make sure we add to this action type. We can do that ACT again just for uh, consistency. And then down, as we're reading our inputs here, in our void read input method, we can say data button one, this is our interact button, so we can pass in as well, in addition to the interact duration and we don't have a secondary value, we can say action type interact. Whereas for the attack button, we want to pass in action type attack. And that's all we really need to do, because now we are passing the hitbox the proper information, hey, we're interacting, here's what el whatever else you need to know, or hey, we're attacking, and the hitbox handles the rest. It passes in, it knows now that it's colliding with the proper type of object, and will pass in the right, or it'll call the right function, so that we're doing what we want to do. Let's jump back over to Unity. Take a double check at our input manager. We'll remember that our button one is Z, so that's going to be our interact button, and then button 2 is X, that's our um, attack button. So now we can hit play, and if I walk down and over, say, to this attackable object, and I hit Z, nothing is happening. We can see, actually, if I click the player hitbox here, that it's, it's activating, but it's not um, doing anything to it. However, once I hit X and start attacking it, it changes color, slowly going from green to red. Likewise, over here, I can attack the sphere all I want but it's not until I hit the Z button to interact with it that it actually activates. So that's actually gonna wrap it up for our walking controllers. Now that we're able to interact with things, we're gonna be able to do things like, say, get into a vehicle and then start driving it around, or even you know maybe pick up some kind of item that lets us fly, which is going to be the next couple of segments of this series where we talk about vehicle controls as well as flight controls. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.